So in our previous demonstrations, what we've looked at is how BlazeMeter can help you with your end user functional and performance testing. Now we're going to look at another example where BlazeMeter can help. So in our example with our digital banking application, uh, we have a new requirement. The requirement is that the application needs to now support an external API, which is provided by Visa. So if we look at our little architecture, here's our banking application. Um, here's our Visa API. Now that API obviously may not always be available. Certainly for the developer, it may not be something he can access when he needs to test. Um, we need to allow him to do things like negative testing, performance testing, as well as you now these APIs, sometimes there's a cost to actually using the APIs. So a way of him running these, these tests against the API locally within his IDE. And the answer is to use Code SV. So Code SV can be free downloaded from this website. So codesv.io. Um, there's documentation, there's videos to explain how to use it. So we can download the code SV and incorporate it into our IDE. So let's go to IDE. So within the IDE, we've got a very simple test. Here's our test here. Um, now as part of the test, we have to make this call to the API. So this is the API that we're testing against. That's the actual URL for the Visa API. Now within the test, what we've done is defined a virtual service. So in this section here, um, this is the definition of our virtual service. So we'll intercept any calls to this URL and then we turn the response that's within the screen here. So if I run this test, so this is the response body, we're going to run the test. Let's run a JUnit test. So on the right hand side, what you're going to see is um, the test initializing along with the virtual service. So as part of the test, we'll initialize the, initialize the virtual service. We'll then run the tests and we'll see the output. So in this example here, if I just make this a bit bigger, uh, this is the response that came back from our virtual service. So that's the, the response from our API call. And you can see that the action code, which indicates if it was an approved or denied, is a 0, 1. If we modify that in the code, and I just rerun exactly the same tests, uh, what we're doing is changing the response that comes back from that API. So within the code, we can now test different responses from that API, positive and negative tests. So the test is just running again. And there's the test. And you can see now that action code has changed to respond to what we put into the code. Now, if we look at the JUnit, obviously JUnit passed. Now, these responses, these transactions, um, we can define within the product various ways of how we can manage those. So in our example, what we've done is we've saved this locally into a JSON file. So we can show you how we can reuse that transaction. We can also do things like automatically push these transactions to our BlazeMeter platform. So as developers are developing these, these responses, they can be published into a transaction repository and sa saved and used by other teams. We can also automatically pull those responses from that transaction repository. So within the code, we can define the tags and perhaps we can say what we need is responses that are for approvals or perhaps insufficient funds. We just put the tag within the test. There's a call then to our transaction repository to send it the relevant responses for that, that actual test that we need to run. So let's go and look at the transaction repository. So we're now back in BlazeMeter, and this time we're under the Mock Services tab. So in the Mock Services tab, we can do things like we can create a Mock Service. And these Mock Services you can create from things like a Swagger file or a half file. We can also load in the transactions from the IDE like we just did with, with the um, code SV. So if I go to the transaction screen, we can take that JSON file that we just looked at. So let me just bring that back up. And we can take that transaction and drag and drop it into the UI. Now in the wizard, we can now make a choice. We can either assign these transactions to an existing service. So we have existing services here. Or we can actually type in and create a new service. So we could actually create a new service. But I'm going to add these to our Visa payment service. Now we can also define what are called tags. So if these are, you know, perhaps these are approval responses, we can give it a tag. Um, this allows us to find these transactions quickly and assign them easily if we want to run all the all the transactions that are approvals or insufficient funds or any other tag that you want to assign to the transactions. We then click import. 
We've now taken that transaction and we've loaded it into our transaction repository. Now, if I go to that service that we just looked at, these are the three transactions that we just loaded. So that's the tag we assigned. Now, if we open up one of these transactions, what you will see is um, we've got the, the URL and then the corresponding response. Now you can modify these. So once they're loaded, you can come in here and things change the status code. You can modify the actual request itself. So you can put in regex and various things to change the way that we actually match on the request for this response. Now we, we have a range of transactions already loaded here. These ones here have been defined before. So these ones are showing things like we have an approval, we have one for insufficient funds, uh, a transaction not approved, invalid merchant. On the right hand side, you can see the different tags. So these tags kind of correlate with the responses that are inside the transactions. We can then take these and assign them to what we call a mock service. So if I go to our mock services screen. So this mock service is running, you see on the right hand side. Now, what does that mean? Um, what it means is it's actively on the network. So if you look at the endpoint here, what you can see is this is the endpoint of the API that is running for the mock service. We would take this, this endpoint and then configure it in your application to point to that endpoint. So we take the, the URL here, we'd go into whichever application you want to instrument, change the URL that normally points to the actual Visa API and replace it with this, like this URL. From that point on, all those transactions are going to then be sent to this endpoint. Now, what's going to happen is um, the mock service will take the requests that come from the application. It will try and match it against these transactions. So these transactions are loaded into the mock service. Now, I can choose to remove these. So in this case, we're just going to have these two transactions, or I can load them back in. So you define what makes up the responses inside the mock service. You can also change in the parameters what happens if there's no response. So perhaps what you want is if if the uh, mock service doesn't respond with anything, you want to be redirected onto the live service. I'm going to put that back to there. Now I've made those changes. I'm going to click update just to make sure that the um, mock service is up to date. Now let's show you what this actually means. So if I go to my my banking application and we look at this Visa Direct. This is the bit that's been added. So as part of our development, we've added this new Visa Direct section. And in the drop down, what we've got is a very simple drop down. We need to select um, an account number. So we're going to set, select an account number ending in one, two, three. And we need to select amount of um, money we want to transfer. So let's say we're going to transfer $5. We click Submit. Now this is the response that came back from our API. So we got an approval. So that, that transaction was approved. Now what if we went back in there and instead of $5, we wanted to do $55. Now this time what's happened is uh, the response from the mock service was insufficient funds. And again, if we do that one more time and the third time, let's say we try and put in loads of money and this time we got an error because basically it didn't respond at all so let's go and look at what actually happened if we go back to our mock service screen um, we can review the log for this mock service and what we're going to see is uh, the transaction as it came in and what, what was it matched so if we scroll down to one of these you can see here um, this is the transaction and this is the response so in this case we sent back a 51 we scroll down further. In this case, we sent back a zero zero, and the top one um, not found. So um, there was nothing found to match that particular criteria. So we sent back a not found. So all of those transactions are being handled by this mock service. If we were to come in here and add some more, um, you can basically simulate whatever scenario you need. You may need to have all the you know, negative testing, positive testing, different scenarios. Um, you modify the payload of the mock service and then the application will then integrate you know, through the mock service, query those transactions. Now that the mock service is created, let's go back and revisit the tests we recorded earlier. 
In reality, we never have access to a full environment to test. Either there's a mainframe, third party services or missing parts environment that prevent us from getting all of the testing done that we need. Or we need to perform negative testing that just can't realistically be done in an actual environment. So mock services come into play that allow us to complete our testing. Instead of having a different group create and launch a mock service before the test gets run, we will connect the mock service to the test itself. Yes, we're going to connect the mock service to the test. This is what we call self-defining tests. The test itself will set up the mock service. We don't have to rely on someone else setting up the service. And we don't have to remember to get to a different tab or product to launch the mock service before the test. So if I click on the mock service tab and we click on the plus sign, um, this will show us all of the mock services. So we're going to choose one we want to work with. We can see here that it's running. We also see here the endpoint. So again, we can take that to go and configure our application. Now at this point, um, when the test is initiated, we'll ensure that this mock service is running automatically. So at the test initialization, initialization time, we'll ensure that this mock service is available. So join me in the next video where we'll look at how BlazeMeter can help you with your, your API testing, now your, your development API testing, as well as your ongoing API monitoring.